Sam Raimi's Evil Dead franchise is truly a classic among horror films, and it has also inspired many comics, series, and other media. Out of all the characters in Evil Dead, Ashley J. Williams is remembered as an iconic hero and is well-loved by fans of the franchise. Bruce Campbell portrayed the character in the 1981 Evil Dead movie, and he has ever since appeared in various sequels and spin-offs, such as Ash vs. Evil Dead. Today, we'll dive into this cultural icon's origin story and tell you everything about Ash's roles across the Evil Dead franchise. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. The first ever appearance of Ash Williams, The Evil Dead. Ash grew up in Elk Grove in Michigan and lived with his father Brock Williams and his sister Cheryl. Ash was born on the 8th of April, 1957, and his mother soon abandoned their family. Ash did not get along well with his father and sister, and they often argued and fought over silly things. As Ash grew up, he found a lifelong friend in one of his school friends named Chet Kaminsky. The two often hosted high school parties, and Ash even met his girlfriend, Linda, at one of those parties. However, he soon left her for another girl named Linda, and the couple even worked together at a part-time job at the local superstore named S-Mart. The couple later became friends with Scott and his girlfriend Shelly, and they all eventually studied at Michigan State University. The Evil Dead movie explores the story of Ash, Linda, Cheryl, Scott, and his girlfriend, Shelly, as they go on a trip to an isolated cabin in Tennessee. Sam Raimi directed the movie, and it was quite a huge hit. It was screened at the 1982 Cannes Film Festival, and it immortalized Ash Williams and the Evil Dead franchise in the history of pop culture. The movie begins with Ash and his friends traveling to their cabin in a rural locality in Tennessee, and they start noticing strange things as soon as they arrive at the place. The cabin porch's swing starts moving on its own, and Ash's sister, Cheryl, even hears a demonic voice asking her to join them. While Cheryl does not mention this strange experience, someone possesses her and she draws a picture of a book with a demon's face on it. As they explore the place further, Ash decides to investigate the cabin's cellar along with Scott, and they find many strange books and a tape recorder stored there. They carry the items to the rest of the group and even play the tape recorder, which starts playing some incantations. These incantations resurrect an evil demonic entity, and Cheryl urges them to turn the tape off. Cheryl later steps out into the woods to investigate the source of some weird noises, but she is attacked in the woods. She returns to the cabin and asks Ash to take her back to the local town, and Ash agrees when he realizes that the bridge to the cabin has been destroyed and that they are trapped in the middle of nowhere. He then returns to the cabin and listens to the tape, trying to figure out a way to kill the demonic entity. He soon learns that the only way to kill it would be by injuring the demon's host body when one demon possesses Cheryl and forces her to attack Linda. Cheryl stabs Linda's ankles with a pencil and even comes after Ash. After pushing Ash into a shelf on the wall, Scott manages to control Cheryl and even locks her in the cellar. Ash and the others argue over what to do when one of the demons crashes into the room and attacks Shelly. The demon turns Shelly into a deadite, a kind of demonic zombie controlled by dark demons such as the Kandarian demon. Shelly attacks Scott, who tries to defend himself and kills Shelly by throwing her into a fireplace. However, Shelly soon regenerates herself and Ash guides Scott to dismember Shelly to finally kill her. After burying Shelly, Scott returns to the cabin and only takes a few breaths before dying right in front of Ash. He warns Ash that there is no way to escape the place and even tells him about the violent trees that seem to be possessed by some demonic spirits before dying. After losing two of his friends, Ash checks up on his girlfriend Linda, but he realizes that she is also possessed by demons and is trying to attack him. Ash is left with no option but to dismember her and kill her, but he refuses to do so and leaves after burying her. Linda soon revives and goes after Ash, who finally gives in and decapitates her body with the help of a shovel. He dejectedly returns to the cabin, where he is only left alone with Cheryl. As Ash checks up on his sister, he discovers she has escaped the cellar. She then sneaks up on Ash and tries to choke him, and Ash defends himself by shooting her in the face and then leaving. 
He locks her behind a door by barricading it, but his troubles seem to be never-ending as Scott's body reanimates into a deadite. Scott returns to attack Ash, and even throws the sacred Naturom de Monto book close to the fireplace. Finally, Ash kills his friend by gouging his eyes out, and even pulling a tree branch stuck in his stomach, which finally causes Scott to bleed to his death. In a jarring finale, Ash faces Cheryl for one last time, and even uses his wits to throw the Naturom de Monto into the fireplace. As the book begins to burn, all his dead friends who had reanimated as deadites free and start to decompose and fall to the ground. In quite a gruesome turn of events, Scott and Cheryl's corpses begin to fall apart and spurt blood all over the place. While Ash is covered in his friend's blood, he soon steps out of the cabin as the sun rises and tries to escape. As the scene ends, a demon lurks through the forest surrounding the cabin and attacks Ash from behind as the movie ends on a cliffhanger. While this scene was intended to portray Ash's death, it was soon declared that he had survived the attack, and a sequel to the movie was soon announced. <laughs> Ash Williams has been a part of all of the sequels that followed. Evil Dead sequel was released in 1987 and was considered a remake of the original movie as it followed an alternative storyline. In this version of the film, Ash only went to the cabin with his girlfriend Linda, and the story revolved around the couple's misadventure on a seemingly romantic vacation. After they arrived at the cabin, Ash came across a tape recording that belonged to the archaeologist Raymond Noby, who was the cabin's former resident. He decides to play the recording, and Raymond's voice recites strange passages from the Book of the Dead that he had found during one of his excavations, and this book was also known as the Necronomicon Ex Mortis. While Ash plays the tape, the incantations uttered in the voice recording awaken the Kandarian demon that resided within the cabin, and this demonic entity then attacked Ash's girlfriend. While Linda tried to defend herself, the demon killed her and turned her into a deadite. Linda then tried to kill Ash, giving him no option but to decapitate his girlfriend and kill her to save himself. Ash even buries her in a grave around the cabin grounds, realizing that evil forces are all around him. In fact, he even gets possessed by a demon for a brief period during the night and decides to escape as soon as day breaks. Just like in the original movie, Ash discovers that the bridge to the cabin has been destroyed and he is stuck there at the cabin for a while. He tries to find an alternate escape route, but a bunch of evil spirits usher him back to the cabin where a revived Linda was waiting to kill Ash. Ash was terrified to see Linda's headless body, while her head tried to bite Ash's hand and later even tried to use a chainsaw to kill Ash. While Linda uses the chainsaw on Ash, he manages to overpower her, and he then kills Linda once and for all. Even though he had gotten rid of Linda, she had already bitten his hand, and his hand soon decided to act of its own accord and try to kill Ash. With no other viable escape route in sight, Ash decided to take matters into his own hands, and he finally severed his infected hand with a chainsaw to separate it from his body, and Ash attempts to shoot the hand but it manages to escape when Ash loses consciousness and falls to the ground. In the meantime, Raymond Noby's daughter, Annie, heads to the cabin with her research partner, Ed, and the two seem to have discovered some missing pages from the Book of the Dead. They approach the cabin and soon find that the bridge to reach it has been destroyed, and they then ask a local repairman named Jake and his girlfriend, Bobby, to show them an alternate way. The four of them head to the cabin where they find Ash's unconscious body covered in blood. Annie suspects that he is responsible for her father's death and the team locks him up in the cellar while they look around the cabin. Annie and the others also listen to her father's tape recording and they learn that Annie's mother, Henrietta, died after the Kandarian demon possessed her body and convinced her to kill her husband. Annie's father had killed Henrietta to defend himself, and her spirit soon possessed Annie's partner, Ed. In the meantime, Ash shows up at the scene and dismembers Ed to save the others while Jake and Bobby freak out and try to escape. However, Bobby sees the same fate as Shelley in the original movie, and she is attacked by the trees and killed. In the meantime, Jake pulls a gun to Annie's head and threatens her to find Bobby, while Annie tries to translate the chants in the Necronomicon. Ash also starts feeling like he is being possessed once again, and he manages to kill Jake with some help from Annie and Henrietta's spirit. In a horrifying turn of events, Ash turns into a deadite and tries to go after Annie, 
but he soon snaps out of this state and returns to reality after spotting his ex-girlfriend's necklace. Annie even helps Ash to modify the chainsaw he had used to cut his arm and even restore his arm. Later, Ash gets rid of Henrietta after they find the last missing pages of the Necronomicon and the trees in the woods soon start destroying the cabin. Annie then starts reading the book's incantations to restore things to normal, but Ash's severed hand acts of its own accord and stabs her in the back with a Kandarian dagger. Before dying, Annie completes the incantations, creating a vortex that sucks Ash in his Oldsmobile Delta 88 car within it. As Ash finally comes to his senses, he realizes that he has ended up in the Middle Ages and that a group of knights has confused him with a deadite. However, a real deadite soon shows up at the scene, and Ash uses his shotgun to shoot at it and kill it. The knights then start believing that Ash is their savior, and they start declaring him their hero as the movie comes to an end. It was never meant for the world of the living. The book awoke something dark. In the third part of this movie franchise titled Army of Darkness, Bruce Campbell once again portrays Ash Williams and solidified the legacy of the Evil Dead franchise. The movie was released in 1992 and continued with this storyline that focused on Ash's adventure to the Middle Ages. After arriving in this era, Ash was captured by some men who worked for the legendary King Arthur, as they suspected he was a spy for their enemies. King Arthur was at war with Duke Henry, and his men confiscated Ash's belongings and shotgun. He was then thrown into a pit with one of the Deadites, where he defeated the evil entity and gained King Arthur's respect. The king then set him free, and Ash even asked him to set Duke Henry free and put an end to the war. Ash then became a legendary hero even in the Middle Ages, and he also started having feelings for a young woman named Sheila. Ash sought the help of one of Arthur's men named the Wise Man, who told him that the only way to return to the future would be through the Necronomicon, also known as the Book of the Dead. He then searched for the book and even ventured through a haunted forest where an unseen entity attacked him. Ash even ended up in an unfortunate incident where he crashed into a mirror, and various reflections of his own self came to life in the broken shards of the mirror. Ash realizes that he would have to dismember all these copies of himself before moving on, and he does that before finally arriving at the book's location. However, he faces a final challenge wherein three books are placed in front of him, and he has to pick the right one. Ash cannot remember the incantation that brings the book to life, and he makes a mistake while trying to pronounce the magic words Klaatu Barada Nikto, and mumbles a few wrong words instead. The graveyard begins to explode, and skeletons start rising from their graves. Ash then takes the book and rushes to the wise man, unaware of the fact that his mispronunciations have raised an army of darkness. An army that would be united and led by an evil clone of Ash. When he gets back, Ash demands to be returned to his own time, but soon finds out that a flying deadite has kidnapped Sheila. Furthermore, the deadite has taken Sheila to Evil Ash, who has turned her into a deadite as well. While Evil Ash led the deadites, Ash then decided to bring the living people together to overpower the Army of Darkness. He used whatever knowledge about deadites he had gained so far, and even teamed up with Duke Henry to kill as many deadites as possible. He finally blows up Sheila, who was leading the fight along with Evil Ash, and peace was then restored in these medieval times. The wise man even helped Ash to figure out a way to use the book to return to his time and give him a potion to return to the present. As the movie ends, Ash narrates his adventure to one of his co-workers at Esmart, when one of the surviving deadites sneaks into the store and attacks a customer. Ash then uses a rifle to kill the deadite before kissing his female co-worker as the credits start rolling. Initially, the movie had an alternate, darker ending, wherein Ash ends up in an apocalyptic future by taking extra quantities of the potion given to him. However, the production house wanted the movie to end positively, and this ending was soon scrapped. Ash later appeared in a post credit scene in a 2013 remake of the Evil Dead film, wherein he says his signature phrase, Groovy, and then looks directly at the camera as the screen turns black. Ash vs. Evil Dead furthered the legacy of Ash Williams. Ash Williams was also the protagonist of a spin-off horror comedy series titled Ash vs. Evil Dead, wherein Bruce Campbell once again returned to this role. Campbell even commented on his role in the series and described Ash Williams as a guy who lives with survivor's guilt and avoids discussing the traumatic events in his life. Sam Raimi developed the series, 
and it went on for three seasons from 2015 to 2018. The first season of the series begins with Ash mistakenly setting the Kandarian demon free while reading a passage from the Necronomicon book. He was trying to impress a date when he ended up releasing the demon, and his younger co-workers named Pablo and Kelly agreed to help him recapture the demon. Ash even learns that the only way to contain the demon would be by returning to the cursed cabin in Tennessee and burying the Necronomicon book within the cabin grounds. While they head to the cabin, they cross paths with the book's creator, Ruby, who tries to bargain with Ash to free her demonic children. She tells Ash that she will spare his friends and fulfill his only dream of living a quiet life back in Jacksonville, but only if he lets her release her children. Ash readily agrees to her offer, and he soon returns to Florida with his friends, unaware that Ruby has unleashed havoc all over the country. In the second season, Ash tries to convince others about Ruby's presence and how she has released the Deadites all over, but no one seems to believe him. Finally, one of the Deadites shows up in Jacksonville and declares that Ruby had sent him to go after Ashy Slashy. Ash had gained this nickname after everyone thought he was responsible for his friend's deaths, and he decided to leave Jacksonville and return to Elk Grove to look for Ruby. As he returned to his hometown, Ash reunited with his father, who blamed Ash for his sister's death. Ash finally located Ruby, and she told him that her children had betrayed her, and tried to summon a demonic entity named Ball on their own. Ash agrees to ally with Ruby to put an end to her children's plans and also retrieve the Necronomicon. They get their hands on the book and then throw it into a portal to hell. However, this action only increases their problems as it allows Ball to access the human world. Once Ball arrives on Earth, he takes the disguise of a doctor and even ends up at an asylum where Ash has been admitted. In disguise, Ball tried to convince Ash that he was only suffering from delusions, and that there were no such things as demons. Ball even tries to manipulate Ash into going on missions for him, and it is later revealed that Ash was only pretending in order to get closer to Ball and send him back to hell. While they try to execute their plan, Ash's friend Pablo ends up dying, and Ash then decides to bring him back to life by returning to the past and never touching the Necronomicon. He asks Ruby to travel to the past with him to the night where he finds the book in the cabin, and they find a younger Ball already at the cabin. A younger version of Ruby also accompanies him, and Ash confronts Ball and even sets the cabin on fire to end this story once and for all. Ball ends up sinking into the pits of hell, while Ash and the others return to the present day. Ash even becomes a local hero after his victory over Ball, and the citizens of Elm Grove even arrange a parade to honor him. As this season comes to an end, the scene shifts to the Necronomicon book that Ash had left behind at the cabin. In the show's third season, Ruby and the Deadites return to Elm Grove once again with the help of the abandoned Necronomicon. In the meantime, Ash reconciles with one of his past lovers, Candace Barr, and even learns that he has a daughter named Brandy. While Ash repeatedly teams up with Pablo and Kelly to kill Ruby, they learn that Ruby has decided to kill Ash and turn his daughter against him. Ash gets some help from the Knights of Sumeria, who turn out to be an order of knights who had dedicated their life to Ash for all his endeavors in defeating the evil dead. Things seem to work favorably for Ash, as Ruby's own forces turn against her to take revenge for imprisoning them years ago. They go after her under the evil forces of Kandar the Destroyer, and decide to attack Elm Grove and reclaim the Necronomicon. As things get tense, Ash evacuates the locals from Elm Grove, and then decides to stay behind and defend his town from the evil forces. He sent his friends and daughter away, and then fought the evil Dark Ones with the help of his Kandarian dagger. He even used this dagger to kill Kandar, finally saving the world for one last time. As the series ends, Ash wakes up from a coma in the future, and learns that all his friends are alive, but the Dark Ones were not completely destroyed and we're still on the move. This series went ahead with the alternate ending that was rejected for the third Evil Dead movie, and this finale even hinted at Bruce Campbell's retirement from playing Ash Williams. As the credits roll, Ash prepares for another quest, and even says his signature phrase, Groovy, before leaving for another adventure. How does it canonically end for Ash Williams? When Ash Williams woke up in this distant post-apocalyptic future at the end of the Ash vs. Evil Dead series, it was assumed that this would canonically be the end of the road for Ash Williams. After the series aired, the show's fourth season was cancelled, 
and Ash's story ended with a young woman telling him about his coma and how much time had passed into the future. When Ash learns of the current scenario, he accepts his destiny and then says groovy before signing off as Ash Williams from the main Evil Dead canon. The series was cancelled in April 2018, but it was recently announced that an animated revival series based on the same plot is in the works. Exploring his comic book story arcs Ash appeared in various Evil Dead comic book arcs, and he first appeared in a comic by Dark Horse Comics in 1992. He was a part of the three-part Army of Darkness comics adapted by John Bolton, which was based on the movie's original script. Dynamite Entertainment later gained the rights to the same Army of Darkness film in 2004, and they released a four-issue miniseries based on the movie. These comics were titled Army of Darkness, Ashes to Ashes, and featured Ash as the lead protagonist. After the release of this miniseries, Dynamite Entertainment released two follow-up sequels titled Army of Darkness vs. Reanimator and Army of Darkness Shop Till You Drop Dead. These comics later gave way to various Evil Dead crossover comics, some of which included the Marvel Zombies vs. Army of Darkness and Freddy vs. Jason vs. Ash in 2007. All these comics took place in a world where the Evil Dead movie storylines took place in the 21st century, in an alternate universe known as Earth 818793. These comics borrowed inspiration from the original Evil Dead movies, but the events took place on an alternate Earth that was a part of the Marvel multiverse. In 2013, a new reboot comic series was announced, including a new version of Ash Williams. Ash chose to remain in the medieval ages in these reboot comics, and these comics went on for eight issues. Two more follow-up comics followed this reboot, and Dynamite Entertainment later released multiple crossover comic series featuring Ash Williams. Recently, they launched another crossover miniseries titled Army of Darkness slash Bubba Hotep, which included Ash and Elvis as the main leads. This series especially caught the eye of the audience, as both of these characters were portrayed by Bruce Campbell at some point. In 2016, Space Goat Publishing released a three-part comic series titled Evil Dead 2, Beyond Dead by Dawn, and they focused on Ash's storylines in the first two Evil Dead movies. This comic series even introduced a new clone of Ash Williams, which was inspired by Annie Noby's evil Ash clone in the film. What makes this mortal being so unique in his fight against the dead? Even though Ash Williams was just a mortal, he had a lot of experience in fighting the dead, and he had been through a lot of experiences that even took him on a journey through time. His body had become quite durable over his travels, and he could survive fatal attacks by monsters or evil entities. He had even survived a lot of falls from great heights and then landed on his feet and recovered in no time. Ash was also very agile, and he moved swiftly and often outran most of the demonic entities coming after him. In three separate instances, Ash had outrun the Kondarian demon and even fooled him into thinking that he had disappeared into thin air. He could also jump several feet into the air, often seen during the second Evil Dead movie, where Ash jumped into the air to catch the chainsaw with his injured arm. Ash was also skilled at hand-to-hand -hand combat, and he had single-handedly defeated Ball in a physical fight without any powers. He had punched Ball in the face and almost beat him, which finally caused the demon to lose his cool and unleash its powers on Ash. Ash was also a skilled marksman and often relied on his gun to take out his opponents. On multiple occasions, Ash had killed various deadites with his gun, and he even showed off his shooting skills at a party in Jacksonville, where he shot beer bottles out of the air. Ash had also studied to be an engineer at Michigan University, and was quite adept at engineering and constructing complex machines and weapons. He had created his prosthetic hand, and even turned his Oldsmobile into a steam-powered death coaster when he had to work with limited technology in the medieval ages. Ash had found a shotgun at the cabin, and when returned to 1300 AD, he began calling it a boomstick to explain its purpose to the people he encountered in the past. He was also quite resourceful, as he always managed to find some way to get out of tricky situations. He had often dodged his death at the hands of deadites, and he had even figured out how to look past their deception and recognize them. When Ball took the appearance of a doctor at the asylum, Ash easily looked past his fake identity and recognized him, and it was not easy for any evil monster to trick him. He preferred to use a chainsaw as his weapon, and he used this chainsaw against all forces of evil who tried to kill him. The chainsaw became his signature weapon, 
and Ash took great care of it and considered it his most prized possession. Ash also used a bunch of other weapons, and his friend Pablo once made him a special power glove to show his appreciation for him. Ash had created a functioning metal prosthetic hand in 1300 AD which was made out of a suit of armor, some springs, and scrap equipment from the past. After this hand disappeared sometime during the middle of this story arc, Ash then used Pablo's power glove as his second prosthetic hand. He used this glove for quite a while before replacing it with an advanced cybernetic hand in the post-apocalyptic future. When Ash faced Kandar the Destroyer, he had a belt shotgun reloader on the left side of his waist, and he used it to ensure more efficiency while shooting at the evil entities. Bruce Campbell once stated that Ash was only skilled at fighting evil and was pretty incompetent otherwise but he was also a genuinely nice person underneath all his struggles and flaws. I found it. Upcoming Evil Dead Rise might not see Ash Williams any longer. After the release of the Evil Dead movie in 2013, fans of the franchise were thrilled when Evil Dead Rise was announced to be released in 2023. It has become one of this year's most widely anticipated movies, and a teaser trailer for the movie was recently released on Twitter. Ash Williams is notably the most legendary character from the Evil Dead franchise, and fans hope to see him, even if it's in a cameo in the upcoming release. Fans noticed Ash's absence from the trailer, since he is widely credited for the success of the entire Evil Dead franchise. However, Bruce Campbell is credited as one of the executive producers for the film, along with Sam Raimi, and fans are hyped to learn that he is connected to the movie in some form. Evil Dead Rise is directed by Lee Cronin, and it follows the lives of two sisters as they try to save their family from the Deadites. The movie stars Alyssa Sutherland and Lily Sullivan in lead roles, along with actors such as Nell Fisher, Gabriel Eccles, Morgan Davies, and Mia Chalice as a part of their team. In the trailer, a young lady named Beth visits her older sister, Ellie, who single-handedly raises three kids of her own. While the sisters reunite, a mysterious book surfaces in Ellie's building, which soon starts causing strange incidents around the place. The movie is set for theater release on the 21st of April, 2023, and fans are still hoping for Ash Williams to show up in it as a miracle. Bruce Campbell declared retirement from this role after the Ash vs. Evil Dead series by announcing that Ash has left the building. He even stated that he loved playing Ash Williams, but it was time for him to step down as his body could not keep up with the role's physical demands. He even confessed that he had a hard time shooting for the series, and he was often physically struggling with his health and had to rely on stunt guys to finish shooting. Nevertheless, Campbell did justice to the role and ensured that he went out with a bang, and he even stated that he was satisfied with the end of his canon story. He believed that they had pushed all the buttons and fulfilled Ash's destiny, and he defeated evil in the past, present, and future before settling down with a robot lady. While fans of the franchise had a hard time accepting his retirement from the role, Campbell did state that there is a chance that Ash's story might continue one day, and that he would be glad to voice this character in a potential animated series in the future. Campbell also voiced Ash in the Dead by Daylight video game, and we are hoping for the day when he returns to voice this character in the animated follow-up to Ash vs. Evil Dead. This series will pick up right where its third season ended, and it has been rumored to be in the works for quite some time now. <laughs> Conclusion Bruce Campbell's role as Ashley J. Williams has been immortalized by pop culture, and the Evil Dead franchise has undoubtedly created a legacy for itself. While Campbell's retirement from this role signals the end of an era, we hope the upcoming movie does justice to the standards set by the original. And, if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. This has been Corey Whelan for Marvelous Videos. Have a good one, be safe out there, and thanks for watching.